Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. And I invite you to join me as we journey through a forbidding landscape. People with the most demoniacal furies in or out of this world. There is that moment, that imperceptible, unmarked, uncertain moment, when we pass from day to night. And from life to death. And try as we may, we can never isolate that moment. We can never grasp it, hold it, keep it. And somewhere during that moment, only the length of the shortest fraction of a second, the living are separated from the dead. And yet, it might just as well be as long as all eternity. Who are you? You know who I am. I'm Bert. You can't be. Don't fight it. But Bert is dead. That's right. I'm dead. Then how can you be standing here talking to me? I don't know. I'm here, that's all. What do you want? I want my wife. She's my wife. But first, she had taken a vow to be mine. I know that vow. It says, till death do us part. You're dead. You're parted. I've come for her. I won't let you take her. How can you stop me? I'll kill you. How can you kill me? I'm dead. Our mystery drama, Love Me and Die was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ann Shepard and Mason Adams. The most important decisions of our lives are usually not based upon careful reasoned study or even on common sense. No, our most vital decisions are often arrived at suddenly, irrationally. Men and women choose each other because of mysterious music in the voice or a sparkle in the eye. You remember the saying, had the nose of the beautiful Helen of Troy sloped outward instead of inward, there never would have been a Trojan War. So, Stephen Barrow wanted Emily Phillips for the same reason Paris wanted Helen. She was the most beautiful woman he ever saw. These things never change. Happy, darling? Yes. It doesn't sound very enthusiastic. I'm sorry. Sorry? What a word to use on a wedding night. What I meant... What I mean... I'm so afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? I'm so afraid this is all a dream. Oh, no. No, dear, it's real enough. Oh, Steve, I want to be happy, darling. And you will be, Emma. You and I, we are going to be the two happiest people in all the world. Do you mean that, Steve? Of course I mean it. Now, what, what's troubling you? Bert. Say it. What? I'm thinking of Bert. I shouldn't be, I know, but I was married to Bert once. Yes, dear, you were. You were. Bert is dead. He's gone. Forgotten. Will you listen to me? What kind of talk is this on our honeymoon? Steve, you really are so wonderful. Oh, of course I am. And you just have to put up with me sometimes when I get into these moods. Now, you're not going to have time for moods. We spend the night here at the motel, tomorrow the plane for New York, three days in the big town, and then we fly to London. Is it true? Are we really going? Why do you keep asking if these things are true? I find it so hard to believe that good things are going to happen to me at last. Only good things from now on. Oh, I love you. I love you so much. Let me tell you why you're going to have a deliriously happy married life. Why? Because you're one woman in a million. No. You're not actually of this world. Oh, come on. That isn't true. You're so... You're so... What is the word? You're so ethereal. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the word. And you're so fragile, just like just like the delicate and beautiful things that you write poetry about. When's the last time I told you you were wonderful? Oh, about 45 seconds oh, ago. Oh, darling. I feel now that I can write again. I know I can write again. 
Where are you going? I want to look out the window. It's as if I just saw the moon and the stars for the very first time. Well, now. Let me tell you something, dearest. Every time you see the moon, the stars, the sun, the sky, it should be as if it were for the first time. Each time there should always be the thrill of discovery. This, this feeling is how I know I can write again. It's great. It's gone. All the misery, the suffering, everything I knew with birth, his cruelty, his violence, buried with him. He'll never be able to hurt me again. No, Emily, he's gone. Finally. I'm free. I... <sighs> What's wrong? Emily, what is it? <sighs> Steve, look out the window. At what? There, near the swimming pool. All right, I'm looking. There. This man. Where? There, that man standing there. Darling, there isn't anyone standing. He's looking up this way. I don't see it. He's looking up at our window. Oh, it has to be your imagination. No, 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 Steve. There's a man. No, darling, it's just a shadow cast by the edge. What? See? He's moving his hand. I tell you, there's no one there. He's beckoning for me, for me to come. Darling, 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 it's only your imagination. Now, come away from the window. Uh, I can't move. Emily, there's no one out there. There's no one at all. Come with me, and I'll prove it. No. I won't go to him. He'll take me away. Emily, darling, get hold of you. Oh, look at it. He's so much bigger than you are. Where are you going? Uh, Don't take your arms away. I only want to pick up the telephone. Why? I have to prove something to you, darling. Nobody's there. Oh, Steve. Hello, desk. Yeah, th uh, look, this is Mr. Barrow in room 118. Listen, the swimming pool in the patio area, it has floodlights, those big lights. Steve, he's yeah. coming closer. Yeah, could you, could you turn them on, please? No, no, I, I know what time it is. This is an emergency. Uh, look, just don't ask questions. Do it, please. <laughs> Emily, look, the lights. Thanks very much. You see? You see that? It's light it's all around the patio and the pool. Now, where is that man, the man that you thought you saw? Hmm? Where? Uh, it's all lit up. It's as bright as day. Uh, There's nobody there. It's deserted, isn't it? Yeah. So, it was all just your imagination. But I saw it. It was like I said, a shadow. And then the lights came on and it disappeared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it disappeared. But just before he did, I saw his face. It was burnt. It, it couldn't be. Darling, I saw Saw him. Darling, Bert is dead. I saw him. It was Bert. With that wide brimmed floppy hat of his, the khaki trench coat, the boots. Emily. Cowboy boots. And, and you you didn't see him? No, dear. How could you miss him? You're gonna see Dr. Rothman. Oh, what good will he do? Look, if it was your imagination, then we have a problem. But if Bert was actually there, then Rossman may have a problem. After all, it was Dr. Rossman who pronounced him dead. You sure you saw Bert? How could I not see him, a man of his size? Yet Steve saw no one. No one. And then, when the pool and patio were flooded with light, suddenly he disappeared. But in that instant you saw his face? And it was Bert. No, it wasn't. Because Bert is in his grave. But I tell you, I saw him. Emily, you have a guilty conscience about Bert. Guilty? Why? Because he's dead and you're alive. But I told you how he treated me. Yes, but you keep thinking. Perhaps. Perhaps it was your fault. Perhaps if you'd been more patient, more understanding. <sighs> yes, perhaps. And now, once again, you are married. And on your wedding night, you fear that Bert still feels that he's the bridegroom. And that's why he beckons you to come to him. Doctor, what can I do? Place your trust in Steve. Oh, I do trust. Your full trust. Don't be afraid that this marriage will also fail. Steve loves you. He wants to protect you. Do you believe it? Yes. I believe it. 
If you really believe it, you don't have to be afraid of Bert anymore. I'm not afraid. I'm no longer afraid of Bert. Go on your honeymoon. Be happy with Steve. And you'll never see Bert again. <laughs> How did it go? Dr. Rothman was just wonderful. Really? I suppose it's because he told me all the things I already knew myself. But deep down... Such as? Oh, it's all mixed up, but I think I understand it. Darling, let's order lunch. If you can dismiss it that easily, great. I was silly last night. Yeah. You were also very scared. Well, it was real enough, but it was an illusion. And now we both must forget it ever happened. I've already forgotten. Did you cancel the flight to New York? No, not yet. Let's not waste time here. We can eat at the airport. You mean you feel well enough to go on a trip? It's over. All the fear, all the worry. Our bags are packed. We just have to check out. New York, London, Paris, Rome. Here we come. You folks checking out? I hope you found the service satisfactory. Oh, everything was fine. Just great. Name, please. Uh, what did you say the name was again? Barrow, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Barrow. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It'll be under the bees. Yeah, here we are. Oh, oh, I got something for you. Sure, would be my glad to see it. What is it? Well, you found it for you. Yes, sir, we did. You found what? Didn't you the party that called death middle of the night and wanted lights turned up around the pool? Yeah, but, uh... We well, turned them on. Uh -huh. We figured you must have lost something out there and wanted to find it, right? Uh, no, the reason we wanted... So we turned on the lights, but... I guess it didn't help any. As it turned out, it did. So when the maintenance fellows come on this morning, we asked them to take a sharp look. And they found it for you. Found what? His cufflink. By what cufflink? Well, you're a cufflink. No wonder you're so concerned. It's made out of solid gold. That's not my cufflink. Right there, plenty of days. Your initial, Mr. Barrow. And big, bold B. Well, there must be some mistake. Well, how could there be a mistake? Steve. Let me see the cufflink. Emily, it isn't mine. Steve, let me see. Oh. This. Emily, what's wrong? This belonged. It was Bert's cufflink. I gave it to Bert for a wedding present. Steve, he was here. Bert was here. <laughs> It's all very well for the doctor to say it's Emily's imagination, which is being fired by things like guilt and remorse and fear. Sure, we can all say that. But how about that gold cufflink with Bert's initial on it? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. From a philosophical point of view, one may express many attitudes toward death. But from a practical perspective, it is difficult, if not impossible, to deny that death is, at the very least, final. The soul may live on forever, but on one thing there has to be universal agreement. The body is gone. Well, last night, Emily Barrow saw her former husband, Bert Phillips. And Bert has been dead for over three years. A ghost? Do ghosts wear gold cufflinks? Emily, dear, maybe maybe we better not check out just Oh, yet. no, no, no. I want to leave here right away. But the state that you're in... He's here. I know. Bert's here. We've got to leave. Yeah. Yes, dear, of course. Well, let's, let's just sit down for a minute. Quietly. All right, that's it. Relax. Let's be calm. You say that this is Bert's cufflink. How, how can you be sure? Steve, I know. I know. The store that sold it to you could have had dozens. I didn't buy it in a well, store. Well, the jeweler could have made others, and there could have been someone with the initial B. Steve, I'm terrified. Darling, there's nothing that should make you as frightened as you are now. The cufflink. I made it myself. You what? I was taking a course in jewelry making. I'd always expressed myself in words. I wanted to see if I could achieve all right, meaning. All right, in... all right, I believe you. I believe you. Now, let's look for the rational explanation. This 
cufflink. Add the mate to it. Are the only ones of its kind in the I world. Will, I will fight you, dear. You made it. You recognize it. It belonged to Bird. I still say that there is a rational explanation. No. Not for me. Yes. And you must listen to me. Now, when is the last time that you saw this cufflink? Three years ago. You haven't seen it in three years? No. So, what we must assume is that there was a burglary. The links were stolen. No. The thief may have sold them, and by a coincidence, the new owner had stopped at this very hotel. No, Steve. I remember. I remember you told me that your apartment had been broken into a few years ago. Now, why wouldn't the thief have taken the cuff? Because they weren't in the apartment. Where were they? I buried them. With Bert. You, you, you buried them with Bert? Why? Because they were his. They belonged to him. And he loved them. Bert was here. Emily, you must get hold of yourself. He said he'd come back for me. Who said what? Bert. He said my place was with him. Forever. He said he'd come back for me. And he's cruel enough to drag me away. I'm taking you to the doctor. I've seen the doctor. Now, what do you want to do? Maybe it's this place. Maybe there's something about this motel. How could there be? Let's get out of here. Oh, darling, please. We can still make the plane to New York. How much time do we have? Plenty of time to finish your coffee. Feeling better? Mm, much. It must have been the motel. I remember now. I once spent a night there with Bert. The place has been remodeled. It has a new name. The place can be haunted. Sometimes by a memory. I think this whole town is haunted for me. It's where Bert and I spent most of our marriage. Oh, you look so much better now. I feel so much better. I must have worried you horribly last night. Yes. Well, it should teach you a lesson. Don't ever fall in love with a girl at first sight and marry her two weeks later without knowing anything about her. I know everything I need to know. How do you predict these things, anyhow? I had a friend who married the girl next door. They knew everything about each other. The marriage lasted six months. Transnational Airlines, flight number one for New York. Uh -oh. That's Airport. us, flight now number one to New York. Let's go. Yeah. At gate 16. Your attention, please. Will Mrs. Bert Phillips please report to the airline service desk in the main lobby? Huh. Mrs. Bert Phillips. Mrs. Hmm? Bert Phillips. That's me. No, you are not Mrs. Bert Phillips. You are Mrs. Steve Barrow. That's how he would page me. He's here. Oh, no, darling. You said you'd believe me. And I do, but there can be another Mrs. Bert Phillips. He's paging me. Darling, look, if you claim to see him, that's one thing. And I'll cross that bridge with you when we get there. But you simply can't jump at every sound. Now, wait here a minute. But... No, but, but nothing, but nothing. Here, at this phone booth. Why? Why are we... Now, I, I want to help you. Emily, pick up that directory. Come on, come on, come on. Right. Open it, open it. All yeah. right, find the name Phillips. Hmm. Phillips. Phillips. All right, now, under B. Look, 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 he wasn't the only Bert Phillips. See, there are three Bert Phillips, hmm. two Bertrams, and four, six B Phillips. Hmm. Some of them could be Bert's also. See what I mean? I think so. Now, come on, we'll miss that plan. Okay. Mrs. Bert Phillips... Please report to the oh, service desk in the same That is not you. Two hours mm -hmm. from now, we'll be in New York. Things will be different. All right, here we are. Gate six. Guess we'll have to stand online and have our tickets checked. Why, why, why don't you sit down? I'll take care of it. Las Vegas. <gasps> sure is. Over there. By the gate. A very tall man. Where? See? No, I don't see. There, Steve. He's pointing to me. He's motioning me to come to Emily. Me. Just the way he did last night. Emily. I won't go. Emily. I've got to get away from him. Emily. Emily, come back. No. Emily. No. Emily, he's stop. He's faster. He's faster. Emily. Faster. Stop for a minute. No, you take me away. I won't let him. You can't stop him. Look out for the door. No, Emily, look out. Emily, where are we going? Get me. Get me. Get in quickly. Hurry. Slam the door. Driver, get away from here. As fast as you can, please. Maybe.
Maybe you should sleep now. Dr. Rossman, what what am I going to do about it? I wish I could tell you. Isn't there any treatment, any medicine? It all adds up to time, patience, luck. And if this delusion continues, I would suggest she be placed in the sanitarium. Why? Because she'll be unable to function in normal surroundings. Why, why, why do you call it a delusion? What else can I call it? Well, suppose, suppose it's true. Suppose she really did see him. No, Steve, don't. It isn't good for you to think that way, and it won't help her. But, but just suppose she did. Now, Steve, that's impossible. You know, you, you doctors, you think you know everything. We don't. We know very little. And that very little has to go a long, long way. But what we know, we know. I'm sorry. It's all right. Listen, this, this Bert, you, you knew him. What, what kind of a guy was he? She never told me very much about him, except that he, he treated her terribly. I never met him. You never... I thought that you had known him all. Emily came to see me about a year or so ago, quite distressed. She said she was having trouble with him. She said he would even beat her. What she needed was to build up enough nerve to leave him. Emily happened to mention that you were the doctor who pronounced him dead. Isn't that unusual for a psychiatrist? Yes, but I was the doctor at the scene. What was the scene? Haven't you ever asked Emily... Yes, but she, she can't talk about it. They owned a cabin on Indian Mountain. Bert was a writer on hunting and fishing, you know. That's wild country. The back of their property led to a cliff, a drop of a couple of hundred feet. She was out there one morning, doing some watercolors. He was drunk. They got into an argument. He started towards her, and somehow he lost his footing and fell. Well, now, why would you be called? She went to pieces. All she could think of was to telephone me. I came, and I did what I could. He, he was, was killed, wasn't he? Instantly. It's a sheer drop right onto the rocks. Well, <clears throat> call me in the morning. Yeah. And remember, if this persists, you'll have to think about a definite course of action. Good night. Good night, Doctor. And thank you. Darling, you should should be trying to get some sleep. Where are we? We're at a hotel. What happened? We were well, at the airport. I remember. And you thought that you saw Bert. I did see Bert. And you became panicky and you ran away and I, I took you to this hotel and called Dr. Ross. Oh. And he gave you a shot. He doesn't believe I saw Bert. That's right. Neither do you. Darling. Last night, you said you could understand me. I need that understanding right now. Emily, you must be calm. I don't need someone to tell me to be calm, to relax. I need someone who believes in me. I believe in you. They believe what I tell you. I saw Bert, even though you won't find a shred of evidence. A single, cold, hard fact to support me. You must believe me only because you love me. You must believe me because I asked you to believe me. I would believe you. Emily. Do you? Do you believe me? <sighs> yes, darling. Oh. Yes, I believe you. Suddenly I feel so sleepy. It's as if a great weight had just been lifted off my shoulders. As if I'd been awakened from some terrible nightmares. I'm not afraid to go back to sleep, Steve. It's been such a hectic day for you, too. Won't you get to bed? Yeah. I, I just want to sit here for a minute. I'm very tired. I'm almost too tired to get up. Uh, let me open the window. Don't stay up too late. I won't. I won't. Emily, there's something... There's one thing that bothers me. Emily? Well, never mind. We can talk about that in the morning. What? Who? Who, who is it? Who is it? Just, just a minute. Huh? Good evening, Steve. Who? Who are you? 
You know who I am. I'm Bert. It was Dr. Rossman who officially pronounced Bert dead. So, what's this? The good doctor has an entire array of medical and scientific fact to confirm his findings. Stephen Barrow has only the testimony of his eyes and ears. In the final analysis, you, of course, will have to decide. And I shall present additional evidence for both sides when I return shortly with Act Three. who say that death is the end, and those who say that death is the beginning. Now, however, it seems that we are being faced with death as a continuation. Bert Phillips was killed in an accident, a fall from a cliff. He was properly and officially buried. But here he seems to be standing at the door of the hotel room where his former wife is spending the night with her new husband. Up to now, it was only Emily, frightened and troubled Emily, who had been able to see Bert. But now, is it Steve's turn? Steve sees Bert, sees him plainly, as he stands in the doorway. Who, who are you? I told you. Bert. You can't be. You're dead. I'm dead. Well, how can you be standing here talking to me? I don't know. It's enough for me that I'm here. What do you want? I want to talk to you. May I come in? This is... It's a dream. That's what it is. It's a dream. It may not be. You admit you're dead. What are you doing here? You sent for me. I sent for you. What are you talking about? You'll have to figure that out for yourself. Why would I send for you? There's an idea forming in the back of your mind. You're not aware of it consciously, and you're going to resist it, but it's the truth. I still don't know what you want. I want my wife. She's my wife. She had taken a vow to be mine. That vow says, till death do us part. You're dead. You're parted. That's just a technicality. But if you're dead, why do you want Emily? She belongs with me. If you're dead and she's alive, how can you be together? She won't be alive when I take her. What do you mean? I'll have to kill her. Kill her? Why not? She killed me. Yeah, but you, you, you died in an accident. Ah, it's her story. What actually happened was that I was standing at the edge of the cliff taking photographs for an article I was writing, and she just pushed me over. I don't believe it. You better believe it. Because one day, a year or two from now, she'll have to kill you, too. Oh, this is a dream. I need your help. Why should I help you? In the long run, I'll be saving your life. You have to convince her to come to the cabin. It's the only place from where I can take her. That's where she killed me. You can't be serious. Think about what I told you. Keep asking yourself, why do you see me? You might get the answer if you first ask yourself, why did she see me? Or, better yet, ask her. in that chair. Oh, I guess... I guess I did. I feel so guilty. I had such a wonderful, refreshing sleep. So deep, so restful. Was he... Did I dream? What are you muttering about? You said that Bert always wore a big... A kind of big floppy hat and a trench coat and, a, and, and cowboy boots. Oh, okay. Darling, the absolutely last person in this whole world I want to talk about is Bert. Yeah. Listen. Uh, Bert Phillips, as far as I'm concerned, has never existed. Emily, tell me something. Why do you think... Yes, dear? Nice. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm starved. Darling, you all right? Sure. 
I, I just had a crazy dream, that's all. Steve, you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm okay. What? Well, you haven't touched a thing. Oh, I never eat much breakfast. The important thing is that you feel okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have this terrible confusion, and then suddenly it's gone. Why it came, you'll never know. How it went, you'll never find out. It's as if someone magically took it away. But it's gone, and that's all that matters. <laughs> and now, darling, are we ready to resume our honeymoon? Sure. But we'll have to make some new reservations. Tell you what. Let's not go to New York and then on to Europe. No, why not? Well, we've postponed it twice already. Maybe it's a sign that deep down, we didn't want to go so far away in the first place. How about Mexico City? Just a few hours away and we can... Steve? Are you really all right? Emily. Do you see someone standing by the door? Where? Just to the, the left of the cashier's desk. No, darling, there's nobody standing. It must have been my imagination. Oh, Steve. You've caught it from me, this delusion of seeing people. What did it look like? Uh, I'm not even sure I saw anyone. Mexico City. How about yeah, it? Yeah, sounds great. My problem is I don't have a thing to wear for Mexico. Neither do you. Well, then let's go somewhere else. No, let's go shopping. I'll meet you back here at the hotel for dinner, and we can make reservations for the morning. Are, are you sure that you're up to going by yourself? Darling, I always shop by myself, and certainly never with a man. Well, but do you feel well enough? When I think of how silly I was, or that whole birth business. Well, I've got to get started. See you at dinner, darling. Hello? Darling, I hope you did some shopping, too. Yeah, I picked up a few things. I'm spending a lot of money. Well, it's all right. What are you doing? I thought I'd take a nap. That's good, darling. You do that. I'll see you in a little while. Bye. Why didn't I ask her? Why? Why? You left your door open. Bad. You should keep the door locked these days. What do you want? You didn't ask her. Ask her what? You know what. Were you at the cashier's desk in the coffee shop at breakfast time? You know I was. This is a dream. Dream or reality, what does it matter? You're stuck with me because you believe her. You want to believe her. You love her. This is getting us nowhere. I love her, too. I'm a bigger chump than you are. Even after what she did to me, I love her. And why did you treat her so badly? Who says I treated her badly? Everybody. Who's everybody? Dr. Rossman, for one. He never said I mistreated her. He said she told him I abused her. But you did. Only because she says so. Why should she kill you? For the same reason she'll kill you. You keep saying that. Why do you refuse to believe it? It's true. You can't prove it. Oh, but I can. The camera will prove it. What camera? I told you I was out there taking pictures. She sneaked up behind me and pushed me over the cliff. Her story, she was painting pictures and I was drunk, started beating her, and somehow lost my balance. Why shouldn't I believe her? Because she lied. She made her way down the mountain to where I was lying dead, poured liquor all over me. But she'd forgotten about the camera. The camera? The camera. I was so intent on taking my pictures... That's why I didn't hear her. But the camera went over the cliff with me. It broke against the rocks. It came to rest, finally, behind some bushes. I believe Emily. Oh, your place I would, too. But the camera, all smashed up, has been lying there three years now, in snow, in mud, summer and winter. It's still there. Though what's left of it is still there... Not 20 feet from where I landed. I said I don't believe you. She forgot about it or didn't think about it. In a court of law, that wouldn't prove a thing. That camera could have fallen there at any time. It's not supposed to prove anything in a court of law. It's supposed to prove something to you. What do you want me to do? Bring her to the cabin. To the cliff. I want her. You think I'm crazy? 
Crazy or sane, it doesn't matter to me. Bring her. Let me have no. her. No. She'll kill you. I keep on saying she'll kill me. Why? Okay. Okay. Ask me the question you're afraid to ask her. Why do you think she saw me? Be- because. Because she has a guilty conscience. She feels guilty because she's happy with me. Does she? Now, let's examine that. She feels guilty because she's happy with you. She's so happy with you that on her wedding night, she sees me. Shouldn't that prove something? What could it prove? She's sorry. Not because she killed me, but because she killed me and wound up with you. She loves me. No, she likes you. Why not? You're a nice guy. Most girls like you. But love, (laughs) that's something else. You're not exciting for Emily the way I was. You're not wild enough for her the way I was. That's why she saw me, Steve. She wants me. That's a lie. You can't face it. That's why you didn't ask her. Ask her what? Why she saw me on your wedding night. I'll kill you. I'm already dead. Why do you insist she killed you? Because I was wise to her. You'll also get wise to her one day. Bring her up to the cabin. Never. Scared? Why should I be scared? Once she's up there, she'll have to choose between us. And you're scared she'll choose me. Why do you want to go to the cabin? I have to do something. I don't understand. What is there you'd have to do at the cabin? It concerns Bert. Bert? Suppose you see him again. I don't want to go to the cabin. You've got to. We have to get rid of Bert. But I am rid of him. He may be gone, he may not. But if you can face that cabin and that cliff, then you will destroy him for good. I haven't been here since he done. You never told me how it happened. I was never able to talk about it. Can you talk about it now? I was painting. My easel was set up here. Right near the edge of the cliff. It's a spectacular view, isn't it? Yeah. Careful. Don't stand too close to that edge. He was drunk. More than usual. Ugly, bad tempered. He criticized my work. I paid no attention. And that infuriated him. He lunged at me and I was terrified. I stepped aside. He stumbled and just fell over. It was awful. Did did you did you love him? Oh no. How could I love him? He was a beast. Well then why did you see him on our honeymoon? I didn't really see him. It was only my imagination. Why should you even see him in your imagination? Why should there have been room in your mind, your heart, for anyone but me? Wasn't I enough for you? You were. You are. Or did you want him? Do you still want him? He did. He was there at the hotel. I saw him. You saw him? You wanted me to see him. You made it a test of my love. And so because I love you, I saw him. And that's why I brought you here. So that you can choose between us. Between who? Between Bert and me. How can I? Bert's dead. Is that the only reason? Let go of me. Is it? You. Did you kill Bert? No! Tell the truth! No! <laughs> Did you kill him? Yes! I Why? Because he laughed at me, at my work, at my poetry, at my painting. He said they're a joke. Oh, they're not. They're exquisite. He was right! I'm a phony. Oh, no, you're wonderful. No, I'm not. I'm a phony. I'm not wonderful. Nothing about me is wonderful. Bert was right. He said, you're a phony. A poet who never writes poetry. A painter who never paints a picture. Even the cufflinks. Bert made those cufflinks. He knew what I was. He loved me for what I was. And I loved him. But sometimes I got mad enough to kill him. And one day I did. Oh, Emily, Emily, listen. Emily, whatever you've done, I love you. I don't want you. I want Bert. 
Bert. I need a man like Bert. Emily, you can't mean any of this. Emily. Don't come near me. Emily. Don't come near me. You know where Bert is now. He's just on the other side of the ledge. Bert. It's only a dream. Bert. Emily. Emily. I'm coming. Look out, Emily. You'll fall over that ledge. He's calling me. There's no one there. Let go of me. You're crazy. You'll go over the edge. You'll get yes. down. Emily. Bert. Emily. Help me. I can't let you kill yourself. Bert. No, Emily. Make him let go of me. Oh. Uh, uh, Emily, get away from the ledge! I'm coming to you! The police list it as an accident. The second tragic accident to occur at that beautiful but seemingly fatal spot. What did happen? Once again, we present you with options. We could say, Stephen, consumed with jealousy, killed her. We could say, her guilty conscience killed her. Or, we could say, Bert came back to reclaim her. You can make a case for each, and also for me to return in just a few moments. him. He loves her for reasons that defy all understanding. And once they fall in love, the passion can flame for a moment or for all eternity. We dwell on love here because all the other mysteries are slowly yielding to science, to technology. Soon love will be the only mystery left us. Besides those you will find here, Seven shilling times a week. Our cast included Anne Shepard, Mason Adams, Robert Dryden, and Robert L. Green. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.